Smartphones of 2020 seem to be nearing their cap. We have extremely powerful processing chips, super fast RAM, massive batteries, waterproofing, and the list goes on. We have way more power than we actually need from smartphones at the current point in time, but the things that do improve year after year are the cameras. And that is why I have chosen very specifically eight different smartphones with extremely decent camera setups, some being the best of the best in the camera department and others having incredible camera specs for an unbeatable price tag. While many of these devices have three, four or even five cameras at the back, we're going to be focusing on just one. And that is the main camera that you use to take pictures of every day, even within social media platforms. Of course, to keep things even, we're going to make sure to disable the AI feature mode found within certain camera user interfaces. We're also going to disable any form of beautification and we won't be using a portrait mode per se. If you do see a bokeh effect, it is because the subject is pretty close to the lens of that phone, meaning it's giving off a natural bokeh effect. We have a couple 108 megapixel sensors over here as well as a load of 48 megapixel sensors, but all of them are going to be shot at 12 megapixel resolution because most OEMs decide to output your image at 12 megapixels using something called pixel binning. Now what pixel binning does is it pretty much takes, say we're going from four pixels to one, it takes four pixels and it combines it into one super pixel. Having one super pixel then allows you to see more light in dim lit situations and slightly improves the detail overall. So let's go ahead and touch on every single smartphone's main camera lens in this camera blind test. First up, we have one of the latest devices around the Apple iPhone 12 Pro Max. We get a 12 megapixel main sense over here. I've worked it out to be exactly 12.19 megapixels. We have an extremely wide aperture, the widest of the bunch with f1.6, meaning that a lot more light will be allowed in in more dim lit situations, as well as more depth of field in a natural bokeh effect. Next up, the Poco M3, the cheapest phone here, comes paired with a 48 megapixel Samsung ISOCELL GM2 sensor with four to one pixel binning, dropping it down to 12 megapixels. The third phone of the bunch is the OnePlus 8T. And just by the way, guys, this is not the order of the test. The OnePlus 8T comes paired with a 48 megapixel Sony IMX 586 sensor. We have four to one pixel binning, once again, dropping it down to 12 megapixels, slightly more expensive than the OnePlus, the Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra. Also has a 48 megapixel sensor, but it's using an OmniVision OV48C lens. We have four to one pixel binning once more, dropping it down to 12 megapixels. Same price as the Mi 10 Ultra at the current moment, the OnePlus 8 Pro comes paired with a 48 megapixel Sony IMX 689 sensor, known to be slightly better than the IMX 586 sensor you saw when it's little brother, the 8T. Once again, four to one pixel binning with 12 megapixels, pretty much the most expensive phone of the lot. The Huawei Mate 40 Pro definitely boosts when it comes to specs at $1,300, it kind of has to. 50 megapixels, I've kind of worked it out to be 50.33 to be exact. We're using an ultra vision Laker sensor, which is great. Four to one pixel binning brings it down to 12.5825 megapixels. I try to be as precise as I could. The Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G is the cheapest 108 megapixel smartphone in the world and it comes paired with the latest Samsung ISOCELL HM2 sensor. We do have 9 to 1 pixel binning dropping it down to 12 megapixels. So like I mentioned earlier we should see better results from this guy in lower lit situations as well as noise reduction since it is using a bigger super pixel. Last and certainly not least the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra with a starting price very similar to the Mate 40 Pro. Also it comes paired with a 108 megapixel sensor similar to the Redmi though this has the slightly outdated ISOCELL HM1 sensor. We also have 9 to 1 pixel binning dropping down to 12 megapixels. I will not be using tap to focus on any of these devices throughout the test, so it's up to the device to electronically decide which subject it favors. I will be running through five pictures, all the same on all eight devices, and all of them have been kitted out to touch on different aspects of photos in general. We will be focusing on dynamic range in some pictures, composition with other photos, color saturation with some and also to test out the pixel binning in slightly lower lit situations as well as over and under exposure of course. All I ask is that you do not reveal the results in the comment section of letters A through G by the time you hit the end of the test. Keep it fun for everyone else out there. If you do decide to comment on this video just 
plug in the letters and see what phone you thought it was. Also mention which letter you think was best because that is what matters here. This is Technic. This is my blind camera smartphone test of 2020. And without further ado, let's go. The first picture here is a bird's eye view. Bear in mind, top right corner is the current letter of the picture. A looked a bit washed out. B's color accuracy is pretty decent. I have gone out my way to forget the devices that are labeled this. C doesn't look too bad, though it overexposes quite a lot. D kind of underexposes and changes the color of the water to match the leaves. E seems to be, I, I guess you could say, pretty on par with everything. It looks pretty decent, but it's losing a lot of the quality in the water. F is a little bit oversaturated. G is probably the most accurate over here. Look at the ripples and the reflection in the water, something that other smartphones are lacking. And H kind of has a decent overall look, though a little bit too soft for my eye candy. Taking a look at all of them side by side, it doesn't look too different between all of these from a $100 smartphone to a $1,000 smartphone, but you can definitely see that F is oversaturated and G seems to pick up the most amount of detail in the water. The second picture is of course of me. We need to check out the skin tones of here. A doesn't look half bad. B kind of dims it down, underexposing stuff, blowing out the sky as well, but it picks up a lot of detail in my face. C kind of loses the detail in the face and overexposes the background due to compositioning, meaning that it's not really focusing on the subject elements that you would want it to focus on. E doesn't look too bad. I think the edge detection looks great. It's actually the brightest shot of the bunch and the sky looks pretty intact. F is once again way too oversaturated. G is a bit too soft for my eyes. The actual beauty effect is off on this shot, kind of strange. H looks like a decent all rounder if you ask me, but a little less detail. And overall, looking at them all, H kind of is a bit softer compared to the rest, but G certainly the softest with, once again, F being the most saturated, E looking pretty much the best overall over here, but I do like the warm feeling of D. Moving away from humans onto pets with A, it looks way too overexposed, too little detail, and the chromatic aberration doesn't look the best. B is a lot more clear over here, picking up a load of detail. You can see when flicking to C how much detail was in the shot from B. Going into D, it actually does a pretty great job in terms of focusing on the subject and not blurring the background too much. When it comes to E, it looks pretty decent overall once more, though a little bit too oversaturated. F this time doesn't look quite as oversaturated as E and the dynamic range looks pretty great. G is very, very warm. I'm not quite sure what's going on here, but the central target looks pretty great. And H looks average, I, I guess, once again, a little bit too soft for my eyes. But overall, I think A probably looks the worst over here. And I think that F is picking up a lot of detail, but B just has a load of detail and getting the color accuracy on point. The third photo is of my Panasonic Lumix GH5 camera. And what we're focusing on here is taking focus of the front of the lens and blurring out the background. Once again, like I said, at the start of the test, I did not use tap to focus. So when we move on to D, as you can see here, it doesn't seem to focus on the lens, but it focuses on the background. This is obviously what the electronics of the phone itself decided to do. E looks absolutely fantastic with a very natural bokeh effect there and popping out that front lens. F is kind of dulled down quite a lot over here with a lot of noise reduction being in G does not look the best and H Kind of once again it's, it's just so soft i'm not sure but the background blur looks fantastic on h compared to the rest of them you can also focus on the white balance here with the white background i actually think a does a great job as well as e in terms of white balance f doesn't look too bad h is kind of overblowing it over there and d doesn't even really look white as the others leaving my favorite photo for last of buzz Lightyear over here a is way too overdone very little detail way too much noise terrible dynamic range b's dynamic range is a lot better c is not controlling the lights in the background as well as B did and you're seeing a little bit of noise there. A lot more noise compared to C with D over here and jumping into E it's almost the most perfect shots. Color accuracy is incredible. Dynamic range is right up there with the best of the best. As you can see jumping down to F how great E was and going on to G it actually gives it a nice clean looking effect over here but you can see some granules when it comes to noise reduction and when it comes to H once again a little bit too soft for my preference but it's still 
still pretty accurate, though it does overblow the light a bit. The phones that hold the light sensor the most with the light being in the back, I think is E and F with the rest of them pretty much blowing it out. The most blown out is on B and A. And now to reveal the name behind letter A, the Pogophone M3 with a 48 megapixel isocell GM2 sensor. The colors of the landscape look pretty washed out as well as my face. The detail of my dog doesn't look the best and it cannot do the best when it comes to dynamic range either. Behind letter B is the Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G with the brand new Samsung isocell HM2 sensor, 108 megapixel cam, doesn't look too bad with landscape, actually picks up a hell of a lot of detail in my face. As well as my dog over here, it does a pretty decent bokeh effect with the camera, though there's a bit of noise when it comes to buzz. Behind letter C is the OnePlus 8T with a 48 megapixel IMX586 sensor. The landscape looks pretty much on par with B. It kind of looks a bit washed out with my dog and it does a pretty decent natural bokeh, but not focusing on the subject too much with the last two pictures. D is the OnePlus 8 Pro with a 48 megapixel IMX689 sensor. It tends to overblow the colors of the first shot. It gives a nice warm feel of the second one. The dog looks a bit washed out and it doesn't focus too well on my camera and there's a lot of noise when it comes to buzz. Going on to E, it is indeed the Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra with a 48 megapixel Omnivision lens. It does a superb job when it comes to the landscape, probably the best and the brightest shot with my face as well as my pup over here and the camera looks absolutely phenomenal. Buzz just looks out of this world, no pun intended. F is the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra with a 108 megapixel ISO cell HM1 sensor. This looks pretty good, but once again, tinging the watercolor to green. My face didn't look the best, the dog didn't look the best, the camera looked average, and it's way too dim when it comes to buzz. G is the iPhone 12 Pro Max with its 12.19 megapixel lens, but the best aperture around. I think that the detail and the ripples of the reflection in the water looks pretty impressive. My face didn't look the best, the camera accuracy with the front doesn't look the best, but the buzz shot doesn't look half bad. H, the last device, is the Huawei Mate 40 Pro with a 50.33 megapixel sensor. Everything looks a bit too soft here, a little bit too warm for my preference, though the edge detection is on par and the background blur is probably the best of the lot. Focusing on the first photo, I think the iPhone had the best color accuracy of what it actually looks like in real life, and it shows the best level of detail in terms of water ripple and reflection in the water, something that the other phones don't quite get right. The Samsung, however, looks the nicest and picks up loads of detail, but the colors are way too oversaturated, making the shot look a bit surreal. With the second picture, the Xiaomi had the best balance in terms of composition, dynamic range, and color reproduction. The edge detection is also near perfect. The Redmi is a close second, but seems a bit dim. However, it doesn't blow up the sky. The Huawei is very soft, but the best sky detail in terms of cloud separation towards the sky, whereas the iPhone completely overexposes the sky and the OnePlus 8T underexposes it. With the third shot, the Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G has the best detail with the Poco being the worst in terms of taking a snap of my pup here. The Xiaomi oversaturates the color of the fur. The OnePlus 8 Pro feels the most natural, but doesn't pop due to underexposure. In the second last picture, I think there is a clear winner here, that being the Xiaomi. It really stands out amongst the rest of the devices. Hands down, it looks the best in terms of exposure, focus, and detail. The natural bokeh effect also looks best by not over blurring the frame of the camera. However, the Huawei actually does the best job of natural bokeh and the OnePlus 8 Pro, due to not using touch to focus on any phones, struggles to differentiate between the focal point and the background. The Poco doesn't seem to know how to add proper depth here either. The last picture, hands down my favorite picture of the lot, the Xiaomi outshines all of them here. It shows details that most just don't. It comes out the brightest and has almost no noise. And it does a superb job in composition and dynamic range in terms of accurate visual weight and has a great balance of light intensities from shadows to highlights. It even controls the light from the light bulb in the background the best. The Samsung also handles the light bulb well, but underexposes the rest of the shot. The iPhone didn't control the light bulb well enough, which ruins the rest of the shot. The rest of the phones are pretty great when it comes to visual noise, with the exception of the Poco M3, which has a lot of visual randomness leading to terrible grain. I guess you could say, as old as the saying goes, you get what you paid for in this circumstance, you pretty much do. The more expensive phones definitely held up their end of the bargain. However, the extremely cheap phones didn't do a half bad job. They certainly don't justify the price difference between $100 or $200 to over $1,000.
And those devices in the middle still did a pretty decent job as well. I'm interested what you guys have to say. So please make sure to leave your comment down in the comment section down below. And don't forget, do not ruin it for everyone else. If you want to specifically talk to me or anyone else on the channel about a specific phone, make sure to use the letter instead of the device's name. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. This is Technic and I'll see you in the next one.